Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from exitautomation.com and welcome to part 3 of our API testing with REST Sharp and SpecFlow course. And this day we'll be talking about the basic GET operation with REST Sharp for C Sharp.net. Alright, so let's get started. So the simple GET operation that we'll be discussing in this particular video is this. We are going to be using the class called REST Client which you can obtain using the reference that we have installed in our previous video which is nothing but the rest sharp from the NuGet package so using that you can see there is something called as a class called rest client so this client accepts the URL as one of the parameter in the constructor and then we can use this particular client to execute the request that we're going to be doing well the request formation is going to look something like this as you can see in here in this particular option. The request can be created using what is called as a REST request class and within this REST request class you can see that you can pass the URL and then you can pass the method that is going to be because the request can be of a GET request, a POST request, a DELETE request, a PUT request or a PATCH request. So it can be anything. So that's what it is. So you can specify the method dot GET or POST or put in here in the rest request parameter and then using this particular request you can add the URL segment if you want. So you can see that here I have used the curly brace like post ID like a dynamic value. So the dynamic value is going to be something like 1. So if you specify 1 for the post ID which means it is going to be passing post slash 1 for this particular URL. If you're going to specifying the slash one directly so you don't really have to specify this request.add URL segment because it doesn't really make sense because you have already passed that and you don't really have anything in the curly braces as well so that's why the curly braces sit in here to pass the request so you can use this particular request within the execute method which can then execute the request that you are passing in within this particular REST client and then you can also get the content which is nothing but the response of this particular request using this content property. So you can use this particular content property to retrieve all the different values that it's going to be generating. So these things that you can do using this simple get operation that you'll be discussing in this video. And you can see there are different overloaded methods of execute available, something like execute that we saw before, and there is an execute of generic method, and there is execute as get, execute as get generic, execute as post, and there is something called generic version and a synchronous and there is a generic version a synchronous get a synchronous post something like that so execute method is available in very very different fashions which you can leverage the power of execute and it automatically deserializes as well and once again don't worry about the deserialization yet because we'll be discussing about that in our next video but as of now just bear with me that the execute method is really really powerful to perform a lot of operation in here so let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio 2017 IDE. Alright, so this is our project that we created in our previous video. And there are references for our REST Sharp, SpecFlow, and SpecFlow.assist.dynamic, which is cool. And now I'm going to be start working with it. So let me just expand this content a little bit so that you can see it more clearly. And then we'll be using what is called as a REST client right so I'm just gonna be mentioning here as client is equal to new of rest client and once you hit control dot you can see that it's gonna bring you an option in the intelligence here saying using rest sharp you're gonna be adding the reference there you go and then if I open parentheses here you can see that it's a default constructor and then there is a constructor with the base URL and there is a one with the base URL with the URI type. So, well, I don't really have to worry about the URL here. I can still pass the uh, string here. So I'm just going to be doing that. But before that, let me also start the JSON server because that's con currently shut down in my machine. So I'm just going to be opening the PowerShell maybe. So JSON server dot db.json so you can see this is exactly the one which we discussed in our previous video and then this is the post that you can do right and there is something called as get as well slash one that if you specify that's going to be get so this is the url that we'll be passing as the base url so i'm just going to copy that guy and then i'm going to be pasting it over here and then we need to create a request here so the request is going to be again a var type 
and then I'm just going to be using the rest request and the request as you can see here we need to pass a request with the method and since we have a resource something like post slash post ID we need to pass that as well so the resource can be an URI or it can be a string so the resource that I have is going to be posts slash post ID and the method that I'm going to be passing in oops, as you can see here it brings the enum for us method dot and you can see there are so many different kinds of methods available automatically something like copy delete get post and all those stuff so I'm just going to be choosing the get and then since we have this particular curly brace we need to use what is called as a add URL segment so I'll be just doing that request dot add URL segment and we'll be passing the value in here so which is nothing but the post ID in our case and the value that I'm passing in is going to be one and once it is available we can then verify the content so the content you can verify uh, by first getting the content by the way from the client and then there is something called as execute method so you can see there are different versions of execute methods available as we saw in the slide so I'm just gonna be using the execute just execute method for now we'll be discussing about the other things later and then I'm just gonna choose the request here and let me return the content for now right and let's open the postman so that we can quickly see how the uh, get operation for the post with the post ID of one is going to look like and we can also see if the response that is going to be generated from that particular uh, operation is the same as well all right so it seems like the chrome app is being deprecated i probably have to switch or download the standalone version of the postman and there you go so this is the get of the post of one so if i do that you can see that i'm getting this particular value so this is exactly the same that we discussed in our rest assured course uh, which is available in youtube as well and you can see this is the value that is generates all right so why not just execute this code and if i see the same result coming in here as well so i'm going to put a breakpoint here because we're not doing really any assertions as of now uh, so let it be because I just want to see if this particular code basically works without any problem. All right, the compilation is done. Uh, and we'll be debugging this particular code. And we can see what's happening. So it seems like it's going to perform a get uh, once I do this. Yep, there you go. There is a, a get happened. Hmm. Oh my God. It seems like the post ID has been passed in a different way. That's why we're going to be getting a 404 error. Hmm. Sorry about that. The reason is because we have passed the curly brace as well. It's kind of stupid. You just have to remove that. So I'm just going to do a rewind, which is really cool. This is something which is really, really awesome. You can just do that as well. There you go. And you can see this time it is correct. So let me quickly see what is the content being coming here. There you go. You can see the content is pretty much exactly the same thing that we saw in the postman, right? So you can see in the postman, we got the same response. And this is exactly the same response that I get over here as well. But as you can see, this response is actually, I guess it is of type string. And this particular string value that you can see doesn't really make a lot of sense here because even if you use this particular string, you cannot perform a lot of operations. So let's say if I want to verify this particular content for just the title or maybe just the author name, we cannot do that because it's a string. So you need to somehow manipulate this particular value or maybe deserialize this value into a more meaningful way so that I can verify the author, title, and ID in much efficient manner. So I am saying the deserialization. That's something that we'll be discussing in our next video so that you'll understand how we can leverage the power of inbuilt method as well as Newtonsoft's JSON library methods to deserialize all these values.
So we'll be discussing about a strongly typed deserialization versus the non-strongly typed deserialization in our upcoming videos of this course. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.